Welcome back. This is Relationship Wednesday on Life and Style. We just had that discussion on Monday uh, talking about how we protect our children from all kinds of things that would affect them in their growth, you know, the violence, um, all kinds of atrocities around them and committed to them. We just had that. And now on the Nisa Mehe segment, I've got a gentleman who got introduced to alcohol at a very early age, and that's because of the environment that he grew up in. His mother was selling alcohol, making and selling alcohol, and somehow he found himself right into that by the age of 11. Edwin, good yes. morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, please introduce yourself. Welcome to Life and Style. Welcome to Nisa Mehe. Thank you so much. Okay. My name is Edwin Wanjala. I was born 1988. I was grew up in 11, 11 family of children. And my mom used to, to make alcohol. I started taking alcohol when I was 11 years old. I remember that time I was in five. Okay. And my mother used to check to make changa and busa. And uh, the life became worse as I continued to use it. But I want to blame my mom so much because I used to make that alcohol so that she could raise school fees for us. Okay. Because we were poor, so to speak. But I personally, I can say that uh, sometimes it's because of low self-esteem. Sometimes it's because of peer pressure that make me to use it. Because when you compare this generation right now, youths want to live like other youths. Because if you want to take alcohol or use drugs, you, are, you, you don't belong to that society. But 11 years old, um, even by the standards of yeah. this current generation, 11 yeah. years old is very young yeah. to uh, start using alcohol. As I have said, because of peer pressure and low self-esteem, it make us to use it. Because some um, youths were using it. So when we were at the school, people came, or these school children came at school while drunk. And she, he or she is your friend. You also decide to use it. And because you don't trust yourself and don't believe in yourself, you might say that I must also use this alcohol. Because the way they behave, you see that they are behaving well. You said you've got uh, how many brothers and sisters? I have seven brothers and four sisters. Were they all affected in the same way? No, I'm the only one. You're the only one? Yeah. Okay. I'm the only one who affected so much because those ones, they don't use it. They don't? Yeah, they don't use it. Okay. How come nobody noticed that you were using alcohol at that stage then? if none of your brothers or sisters were using alcohol? Okay. I came to steal. When my mom has meant it, I came to steal. Mostly in the evening hours, I steal, and then I put it in, the, in, the, in the, my house. Early in the morning, I'll take and you go You had the house at 11 years? Okay. It's a house comprised of all of us who are living in that room. Okay. It's a total of 70 children. Seven boys were living in that room. But I could go and steal. And then bring it to your room? Yeah, and hide it there. So that I could take early in the morning and go back to school. Nobody noticed? They came to notice. To notice. Okay, so you were in class five yeah. when you started drinking. Yeah. Uh, how did that affect you? Okay. At that time, you know, once you start using it, the way you are performing, it deteriorates. Because your performance, the way you are performing earlier before you start using that alcohol or drugs, it becomes down day it by day. Lower. Yeah. yeah, it low down day by day. Because you don't concentrate, you are high in the class while some are concentrating. Because your mind, let me say it is a confused mind, because you have added something inside your mind, so you are thinking other things. Even you are not in the school. You are in the school, but your mind is outside. It's not there. Yeah. You but the teachers did not notice. No. They didn't notice. Okay. They noticed when I was in standard eight. 
All right. Yeah. So between standard five and standard eight, those are three years. Yeah. You had been drinking. Yeah. All right. Um, how are you um, coping with other people now, your friends? Were you f in groups of people who were drinking? Um, who were your friends around that time? Okay, my friends were those people who were drinking because they normally say that the parts of them of same feathers they normally flock together. together. So I, I, I can't walk with somebody who believes in God, somebody who don't use alcohol or somebody who don't use drugs. You know, we go by groups and friendship and the way the things we do. Because as I take alcohol, you also take alcohol, you become my friend. Okay. And if we want to take alcohol and I take alcohol, you become my enemy. All right. Yeah. Uh, you did not get into issues of discipline in school. Okay. In fact, when I was at school, immediately I used that alcohol. I was very arrogant. I can come, I was very poorly. Even you can't, I, I can't talk to you. And then it's me, for example, Unijibu Fibaya. Then it that one, it could be bad. So you became unruly? Yeah. Uh, and violent? Yeah. Uh, you started using drugs in secondary school. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. Okay. When I joined Form 1, I started smoking bang. And that bang, I was introduced to bang by my uncle. He introduced me to bang. The first day, I smoked. In fact, I didn't feel anything. When you say you were introduced by your uncle, what do you mean? My uncle, okay. He gave you? He gave it to me. Okay. Yeah. And he told me to go and smoke. But I went, I smoked, but I didn't feel anything okay. for the first day. So the next day, as we were at school, he asked me how I feel, and I said, there's nothing happened to me. So he gave me another one. You know, this, this bang, they normally say that they are different, but the way you take it, Okay. Yeah, but here you can high. So, as I told him, he gave me another one. All right. I went, I hide myself in the sugar again, then I also smoke. And there was a big difference. After I, that? Yeah, I feel very high. When I was walking on the way, I feel like this side is bending down. So I was, I, I was walking while trying to lift it high like this. Then as I continue walking, this, then this one is as if bending down. Then I lift it high. The way I, w I was very high. OK. Yeah. So high. from that moment, yeah. you started using? I started using, and then I became addicted to it. OK. Yeah. Uh, how did that affect you? And at that time, did you stop using the alcohol, or you were using both? No. I was using alcohol, then I was, smug, I was smoking. In fact, when I take alcohol, I must smoke. The alcohol was not enough yeah. to give you the feeling you wanted? Yeah. All right. How was your life in high school? The moment I started smoking bang, you know, when I was in Form 2, I also introduced it to cigarette by my mathematics teacher. So in Form 1, your uncle introduced you to bang. Yeah. In Form 2, your teacher introduced you to cigarettes? Yeah, to cigarettes. Okay. And it happened like this because I went to local school, so to speak. And on Saturday, it is a weekend, but you we went to school on Saturday. And then at uh, around 7, we were back home. So, to Kimaliza, then I go to where he stays because he has a rental house. So I went in there, and around our market, there are two colleges. One down, and the other one up, upside up. So, so this teacher had a friend, friends from, from those colleges. So they normally take alcohol. They normally smoke, they normally smoke bang, they normally smoke a cigarette. So when you went, when you went with him, taking alcohol, there was a brewer nearby, that is the one of the colleges. So students came there, 
we smoke with them, we take alcohol with them. That's the time when he introduced me to cigarette, when we were sitting with those students. You were informed too? Yeah, that time I was informed um, too. You were sitting in a place drinking with a teacher? Yeah, with a teacher. And that did not affect how you related at school? It affected me so much because when you are in the class, when he is teaching, you just look at him like uh, just a, a mere person like I. Then you don't concentrate because of Mezoana. Yeah. There's no that concentration. And There's no also that respect. respect. Yeah. yeah, respect to Pierre Nakualo. Okay. You don't respect him so much. You would do that every weekend or just? Um, every weekend because he has money. He's a teacher. Okay. So I mean, going to my partner come source. Where I should go? But what what were you? Uh, how was he benefiting? In return, he was producing the money mm. for you mm. to drink. Mm. Um, how was he benefiting from you relating with him? Are there favors he needed? Is there work he would give you to do? No. There's no work he gave me to do. Okay. He was just a friend. And because all of us were alcoholic okay. and were drug users, so that friendship became strong. It became strong. What about your family at that point? Well, because I don't think you can hide it when you're a bang user. Okay, at that time they had rumors. But they couldn't have in the But they normally had rumors from outsiders. Because you know when you smoke a bang, it's totally different from a cigarette. Ila roof, ya bang, ya nuka sana. And then it sticks on you more than that of a cigarette. So people are hearing that I, I normally use bang. I, the, the way I behave on the way, on the road, the way I socialize with the people. You know sometimes when you smoke bang and you are very high, you found yourself just laughing. Nobody is talking to you, but you are just laughing. Mm -hmm. Like I remember there was a time when I had a bicycle. I was just pushing that bicycle. And there was a lady somewhere in a certain compound. She asked me a question, Why, whom are you laughing at? And yet I was not laughing. But my mouth was wide open and it did to her outside, but not laughing. Okay. Mine, I, I was thinking my, myself that I'm just normal. Okay. But I was surprised when she asked me that question. Until I, shut my, until I shut my mouth. I touched it with my hand and I shut uh, your, your family could not really get to know that you were doing that. Yeah, what about yeah, your yeah. school? The, uh, what about the school principal? The school principal, he didn't even know. But as I have said, they just have that rumors that they used. But you know, you can't say this person is smoking, yet you have not seen him or gotten him smoking. Red-handed smoking. You know, it is difficult because you can't ask me such a question that you are smoking a cigarette or you are smoking a bang. Yet you, there's no any other day I've ever found me smoking. But if you are drunk, I can tell that you are drunk. Okay, when you are a drunk, when you are a drunk, that one, it is open. Yeah. When you are using alcohol, people will, will, people will know because the way you talk, the way you are behaving, then somebody maybe you are staggering. Tell me how you used to get your money to finance all this. You are drinking, you are smoking bang, you are smoking cigarettes. How are you getting your money? I used it to steal chicken, to steal eggs, and this and any oxplor. You know that oxplor? Oxplor. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Even if I called spare parts, I could remove, go and sell and get money and go and buy a cigarette or a bang or alcohol. Nobody caught you? Nobody caught me. But they, they just found the things in the, in the house are not there. They know I'm the one. from your own house or stealing from other people? No, from our own house. Okay. Yeah. And they knew you were the one? Yeah, they knew I'm the one. They never thought of finding out where you were spending that money? No, they okay. didn't. All right. Yeah. How long were you in addiction? Okay. It is now like uh, 10 years. It's like 10 years, so to speak. 
All right. Yeah. Uh, you went through high school. You finished Form 4 while yeah. you were still smoking and yeah. drinking. Yeah. Okay. Where did your change come? Okay, my change came. The time when I was at Nairobi, that was 2012. You know, that was the time when I became full addict. You know, at what home. What do you mean, full mm -hmm. addict? Because. You know, I, at home. Yeah. You know, addiction. It is also a process because we have a experimental, we have regular use, and we have also full blown addiction. Okay. Is, yeah. So when I came to Nairobi and I got my own money, you know, I started using other things that I was not using when I was at home. Because when I was at home, I was using alcohol, I was using bang and cigarette. But here in Nairobi, I added. Mira, Uberu, the other one I don't know how they call it, Chaffees. That one is in Yamasai, I already started using that one. And then cigarette, I smoked more cigarettes than I was smoking when I was at home. Was it because of the freedom? I hope it was because of the freedom and because of money that I have. Were you working? Yes, I was working. Okay. Yeah. So I could use it daily, on a daily basis. That's the time when I became full-blown addict because I won't stay or I won't sleep With that, without. Just, just describe that when um, the experimental stage and okay. then there is the regular use, then there is a full-blown. At the point you were in high school, when you were using alcohol every week mm. and you were using uh, drugs like a bang and you were smoking, Mm. Was that regular? The, okay, that one. Because when the time I started, to, when I was in the primary, that was experimental use. Because I don't use it on a daily basis sometimes. But when I was in high school, I started using even kwa wiki ni kama mara tatu, mara ine. But when I, when I came in Nairobi, I used daily. Okay. Yeah. I used daily on daily basis. That's the time when it has become to full blown addiction because you want to sleep without using it. But experimental, you use it today. Then you say much I can get it over. Then you badawna kujo na tumia. Then the time to come for occasional or regular use. Unasa kutumia. Leo, kesho kutwa pana kesho na tumia. Kesho kutwa pana kesho na tumia. Pole pole. Then it comes to, to full blown addiction. You won't sleep without using it. So who introduced you to Mira and the others? Mira ni kwa na watu tuwa kichana. Outside there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we mwenye ni... I decided. All right. Yeah. I'm still trying to get, you know, I'm thinking that the effect of alcohol itself is very strong. And I'm thinking that the effect of bang is very strong. I'm trying to understand how you are a mixture of all of this together. Were you able to hold your work? I still go to work, but I lose it. How long did you work? Two years. Two years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, two years. Uh, what made you stop working? Because, but while on the job, then at the end we, we fight. Mm. Until I was sacked. Were you able to pay your bills? Yeah, I was able sometimes. But sometimes, ah, no, I, I can't say that I was able. I was not able. Okay. Because I was not staying alone. All right. Yeah. You were living w with somebody else. Yeah, we were living with four people in one room. Okay. While all of us we were addict. All right. Yeah. So talk about your turning point. Now, you came to Nairobi. You got to the place where you were full-blown <laughs> addict. Mm. What made you change? Okay, what made me change? It's not just that I, de I decided to change. But when I was in Nairobi, I Until my brother gave me money to go back home. When I was at home, I started selling trees. But I when I to get to I was to I said, I to I Then they wonder who sold it. And who are your boy? So I can this boy, my shy is Missouri. Because the immediately in Kiwuza, you go into 
Yeah. Okay. Ya yeah, napotea. Because nimezoea kutumia kutumia dawa to smoke kunywa pombe. So my brother decided to take me to rehab at Eldoret. Okay. Yeah. How long did you take there? 3 months. All right. You take me there for 3 months. It's a program of 3 months. Okay. But after that program, then I continue to stay there because the guy or the owner of that rehab he has that that trust in me and he, he decided to keep me there and while I was training as a mechanic and then in the morning I was teaching people the morning devotion and sometimes when I'm free by morning devotion are you talking about prayer and the bible yeah okay. when I, when I was free I was also teaching them prayer and meditation okay yeah was that part of your rehab program? That one was not part of my rehab program. Mm. My rehab program, I was taken there for three months. Okay, when I was in, the, in, in that program, that's the time when I came to realize God. Okay. Because I remember there was a, a verse in the book of Proverbs which say that there's a way that seems right to a man, but it is ends the way to death. Yeah. So it came in my mind when I was reading the Bible. You know the Bible can't read just a Bible like any other book. That's true. You will read and you meditate over it, over that verse. Then I was asking myself some questions. Who am I? Why can't I change? Is this the way I'm going to live? And then I remember how alcohol and drugs Then I decided, because I said, no, I must change. That's the time when I changed. Okay. That's the time when Jesus showed his face to me and I decided to follow his way. Okay. Yeah. How long ago was that? That one was uh, last year. Last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from then on, you have been free from drugs? Yeah, I have been free from drugs and I'm still also enjoying my sobriety. Okay. And you know, it is also a challenge because this sobriety. You won't make it if you are alone. So you need support. Who you has been supporting you? You need support from God, not just a human being. Yeah. Yeah. But who by, has by been supporting you also, um, human beings? Okay. My brother, known as Victor Angela. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's been helping you, just working with you. Yeah. But in fact, he's the one who paid that 90000 All right. Yeah. You talked about uh, training as a mechanic. Yeah. Are you working as a mechanic now? No, right now I'm not working as a mechanic. Okay. Yeah. All right. If there is somebody who's struggling with drugs, I want you to look at this camera and talk to them. 30 seconds, what should they do? What he need, he only need to change. And change is not through human being. Change is through God. One thing that he must, he or she must do, just to decide. To have that trust and to have that belief. And also one thing that affects us so much is just low self-esteem and peer pressure. Just avoid those things. Then you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior in your life. This addiction, you won't make it if you are alone, so to speak. You won't make it. You have to decide. And how do you decide? You just start one, once, you just, you just wake up one day and you say, no, I must follow Jesus Christ. And I must find you. And you start praying. You read the word of God. And God will change your life. All right. You had it that you've got to make the decision. And you cannot just walk through that alone. The hope that we have, though, is that it is possible. Because if he came out of it, you know, not just with one substance being abused. That was alcohol. That was cigarette. That was bang. That was mirror. Uh, and others and he was able to walk out of it and he's been free for a year plus right now, it is possible for you also. That has been Nisa Mehe. We take the break and come back on Style My Wife, Style My Hubby with Crystal Okusa. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> You look so warm. Yes. And a bit of. That's a nikifa heavy. Yes. Wa shirika wangu wa kiniona. Unas e pasta. Eh. Kwa put on a suit. <laughs> 